Now, in the last video we did on RAVPN, we made sure that the end user is authenticated using SAML. And in this video, we're going to use certificates for user authentication. Now, to begin with, there are two ways in which we can upload the root CA certificate in your secure access dashboard. For the first one, you need to click on secure and then click on certificates that you see in the third column uh, that is settings, right? There you see certificates, go ahead and click on that. And the option that you're interested in is a VPN client authentication that you see right here, this one. Once you click on this, if you have uploaded any CA certificates already, you'd see them right here. Now you see I've got three um, root CA certificates here. Now, if I want to upload a, a fourth one, I, all I need to do is just click on this upload certificate and then drag and drop it right here. And uh, if we read uh, this uh, part as well, it says when end user devices connect to the network using VPN, the certificates that device is present will be verified against the root or intermediate certificates uploaded here. Right, so you need to make sure that the that you go ahead and um, you know upload the correct ones. Now, if I go ahead and click on upload certificate, um, now here it gives you the supported encodings, uh, supported file formats, and it gives you a small piece of information here as well. Uploaded certificates will be used to verify device and identity certificates at VPN connect time. Um, so you just need to go ahead and drag and drop. Uh, the one I used was .pem, and it worked like a charm without any problem so this is one of the ways of doing it uh, once you drag and drop uh, it's uh, just gonna go ahead and accept it um, possibly gonna ask you uh, one question one odd question maybe all right just to make sure that I showed to you if I go ahead and drag and drop a dot PEM certificate here and uh, this these are only the options that you know it's gonna ask you for you can go ahead and do it later on as well if I go ahead and, you know, disable it, it's not really going to be a problem. I can enable it later on as well. Uh, so if I go ahead and click on save, it's going to tell me, hey, you already have it. What are you doing? Error uploading certificate. Please provide unique name for certificate name. Well, obviously, because it's the same certificate that, you know, I uploaded before. So that's pretty much it. Now, uh, another thing, as I mentioned, you can change the revocation after this. Uh, as soon as I click on the certificate, it gives you this option right here, right? So not a problem. The rest of the things are the information about the certificate. So I'm going to go ahead and click on cancel, and I'm going to show you the second way. All right, so for the second way, we're going to go to connect and then click on end user connectivity. So once you click on that, you'll see an option for virtual private networks. That is the second option. You need to go ahead and click on that, this one, virtual private network. So let me just go ahead and click on that. All right, so the second way to upload the CS certificate would be through the VPN profile itself. So in this case, I'm gonna show you the example of this profile that I've created um, uh, for the authentication using a certificate. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on these three dots and then click on edit. Uh, you can create a new one and just follow along. It's it's the same thing. So, right. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on these three dots right here and then click on edit. Right. All right. So this is where you mentioned the VPN profile name. And then this is uh, where you mentioned the default domain, the DNS server, and so on. I've discussed all of this in the previous video that I did on RAVPN. So this is the general settings section. The settings that we're interested in is this section right here, um, authentication, authorization, and accounting, which says a single certificate. Um, so let's just go ahead and click on next. All right. All right, so this is the page we're interested in. So we see three options here, authentication, authorization, and accounting. We're interested in authentication. And under authentication, as you can see, we got a couple options. We got the protocols, and then we see something selected here, which says authenticate uh, with CA certificates. Uh, now, the protocol, as you can see, selected is a certificate. In this case, I won't be able to uncheck this box. There are two other protocols as well. If I click on this drop down, that would be SAML and RADIUS. In case of SAML and RADIUS, I would be able to, uh, you know, uncheck this box. 
All right. So I, I can go ahead and expand the section as well. And I got the option of multiple um, uh, certificate as well. So let me just go ahead and show you the protocols first. As I mentioned, SAML and RADIUS. And then I can expand the section as well, where I can go ahead and select multiple certificates option as well right uh, pretty simple and straightforward that one as well i'm possibly going to do a separate video for uh, multiple certificates uh, for this one we're going to go with single certificate um, primary field to authenticate email secondary field to authenticate common name uh, pretty simple and straightforward and this is the second option that i was talking about right so this is the second way from where you can go ahead and uh, you know upload a new ca certificate uh, it's the same thing however it's from here uh, from the VPN profile and not directly with secure and then certificates, uh, right? And it's the same same thing. It's the same exact thing. So if I go ahead and click on upload and you'll see a certificate, you drag and drop and do the same thing, uh, right? And as it mentions, uh, view three uh, CA certificates. These are the three CA certificates that I showed you before. Um, yes, and when it comes to authentication or authorization and accounting when it comes to authorization and accounting um, with authorization and accounting you can enable a radius uh, for authorization as well as accounting but that's not what we're interested in we're interested in uh, authentication um, and we're selected the correct protocol which is a certificate and we're going to do a single um, certificate uh, authentication now if i go ahead and try to uncheck this box I won't be able to do it. However, if I go ahead and select SAML, you see this box is unchecked. I can check or uncheck this box, but I cannot do the same when it comes to certificate, right? When I select the uh, protocol to certificate, which is quite understood, right? It makes sense. And yes, of course, you can change the primary field uh, to authenticate and uh, the second one as well, the secondary field as well. So you can choose any of these as per your requirement and that's pretty much it. So yeah, let's move forward. All right, so once you click on next, you land on the traffic steering page where you select the tunnel mode and you select the DNS mode as well. And if you want to add any exceptions, you can add those right here. Now, um, this section is not really something that we're interested in for this video. So we're just going to go ahead and click on next. All right, so we land on the last part of the VPN profile configuration, and this is extremely important. Number four, Cisco secure client configuration. And we're at the session settings page right now, not interested in this. Um, this is a piece of configuration that we're extremely uh, you know, interested in right now, which is the client certificate settings. Now, if I'll show you the second part as well, if you want to go ahead and change any of these, if you want, as per your requirement, I've discussed um, a problem and issue that may arise if you have not uh, selected all remote users or a certain uh, setup. Um, so you may want to go ahead and check that video out. Um, apart from this, yeah, you got a bunch of settings here that you can change according to your requirements. Now, moving on to the most important part that I want to talk about, that is the client certificate settings. All right, talk about which client a certificate store will be used. We got Windows, we got Mac OS, and we got Linux. And you see for all of them, uh, we have selected all by default, right? Now, if I was to go ahead and click on the drop down, you'll find that we have the machine store, we have the user store. For the Mac OS, we have the system store and we got the login. And we got for Linux, we have the machine store and the user, right? Now, if I was to explain it a little bit on Windows, let me just tell you that the behavior for for all these um, you know operating systems and the way the client certificate will be used uh, highly depends on this checkbox, the setting that you have Windows certificate override. Now, for those of you who know it, that's good if you know how, how the user privileges work in Windows operating system, for example, you'll find that a, a simple user who, is not, who does not have administrative privileges will not have access to the machine store, right? You, one of the options you have here is to select the machine store. And let's say the user does not have uh, privileges to access the machine store. If you put the, uh, put the certificate in the machine store, Will that user be able to access it? No, because that user does not have access to the machine store, 
right? And this checkbox right here actually, um, you know, toggles that behavior. Now, what does it do? What is the Windows Certificate Store override? Well, when you select Windows Certificate Store override, it allows the Cisco Secure Client to access the machine store even when the user does not have administrative privileges, right? As simple as that. Now, um, well, there's there's a lot uh, uh, to talk about when it comes to these options. So let me do this. Okay, you can refer to this right here when the certificate store setting is all, as I showed you, and the certificate store override setting. This is a checkbox. If it is not checked, false means the box, box is not checked. And then what's going to happen in that case? When the box is checked and you still have all selected, what's going to happen in that case? So there's a lot uh, mentioned right here. And for those of you who are interested, please go ahead and pause the video and check it out. And uh, I'm still going to put a link in the description uh, for this. Um, you can go ahead and check it out there as well. Well, there are other settings in here as well, but for the sake of brevity, I'm just going to, you know, uh, Put all that in the description or in a pinned comment uh, to make sure that you know we don't we don't have this video longer than expected. So yeah, just go ahead and click on save once you're done with all the settings, and uh, let's move on to the client now. Well, we got a bunch of certificates here, as you can see. Now, one of the certificates, latest certificates that I tested it out with, is this one. And uh, make sure that this is a certificate which is signed by one of the CAs. Um, for which you have uploaded the root certificate in your Cisco Secure Access dashboard. In my case, you saw three, right? So this is actually signed by the network viking.com CA. And uh, I converted it into PKCS12 to make sure that the end user, uh, the, uh, the machine is uh, the store, the user store is actually able to take it. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, all you need to do is you need to go to cert mgr, c -E -R -T -M -G -R dot msc, hit enter, and it opens up uh, the user uh, certificate store, as you can see right here. Now, you need to make sure that you place a certificate uh, under personal and then certificates, as you can see right here, got a bunch of certificates. And uh, this is the one I uploaded. Uh, this is the one I uploaded and the one at the top, right? Um, now, what I can do is I can just right click on this uh, certificates um, folder and then say all tasks and then go ahead and import. So once I click on import, I can just go ahead and say next and browse the file from here. So let's say I go for, uh, let's say I go for the desktop and I change this to all files, or maybe I could just change it to PKCS12, P12, PFX. Right, I select the certificate, I say next, and uh, I don't have a password there. I say next and place all certificates in the following store. You can go ahead and browse it as per your, I mean, just make sure that you change it to personal, that's it. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I click on finish, the import was successful and we are good. Well, it does take some time, but uh, I've already uh, imported it. So it's, it's, um, it's good to go, right? So that's pretty much it. This is how you go ahead and uh, you know import the certificate, uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna make a separate video for um, converting the certificates, how to generate it, how to generate the root CA certificate as well, and the other things that I did not uh, want to mention in this video, just to make sure that you know it doesn't take a lot of time. Now, um, the one that I'm interested in is um, I guess this one, the Network Viking TLS. I believe this is the one. So I just clicked on it. And let's see if we're able to connect. If not, oh, I don't even remember the one that I've had created here. I tested it quite some time back. Uh, I believe this is the one or, or the one that, that mentioned TLS something. The name was TLS something, right? So it should be good. Let's wait. It's trying to contact Network Viking TLS. Auto select nearest location. Come on.
I guess I should just pause the video for some time. <laughs> Not sure how long it's going to take. I'm really not sure how long it is going to take. Let's wait. Establishing. Awesome. Okay. Let's give it a couple more seconds. Come on. So, uh, in the meantime, let me just tell you, you can have SAML and certificates at the same time. So, you know, it's not like if you want to do certificate-based authentication, you... You you know you cannot have SAML. You can have it as a combination. As you can see right here, it says AnyConnect VPN connected the network Viking, and we are good. That's pretty much it. So um, I hope this video was useful, and thank you so much uh, for your time on this. If you're new to the channel, you know what to do.